uh, we were discussing on the effects of uh, concentration of component polymers in the blend on the on their properties. So, we are talking about additive behavior, synergistic behavior and uh, incompatible behavior due to incompatibility of the blades. Now, this can be viewed in other way if you look at the diagram. <coughs> it shows four different cases, one case is miscible, second case is semi compatible, third case is incompatible and fourth case is synergistic. The previous figure which I showed uh, that previous figure are broken into four different uh, curves. So, these completely explains the effects of concentration of polymer components in a uh, on the properties of the polymer blends. In case of complete miscibility properties are more or less proportional to the contents of the two polymer components in the blend. Here you see uh, this uh, proper this uh, uh, properties are proportional to the property are proportional to the uh, com, uh, the properties of the components in the blend. Here the commodity polymers can be the, the this kind of feature is found in case of commodity polymers which are blended in different proportions to meet the specific requirements of each product to be manufactured. Now, the example of such additive effect of miscible components are say norail. Norail is a mixture of polystyrene which is a commodity polymer <coughs> as well as a cheap polymer. With this polystyrene, cheap polystyrene polymer, polyphenylene oxide <coughs> which is relatively expensive polymer, these two are blended. <coughs> now, polyphenylene oxide uh, is a polar polymer as well as it contains aromatic ring on the backbone chain, phenyl ring on the backbone chain and polystyrene is a purely hydrocarbon polymer in which the backbone chain is made of carbon and the phenyl ring is present as pendant group as a substituent of one of the car, uh, hydrogens of uh, alternate carbon atoms. <coughs> it has been found that the properties of norail are additive of the properties of the component polymers polystyrene and polyphenylene oxide PPO. Norail has poor thermal stability than the than either of the polyether is the polyphenyl oxide this is a polyether polymer, but it is easier to process. It shows this polyphenyl oxide is a thermal stable polymer. Polystyrene is its thermal stability is lower than that of polyphenyl oxide. In order to increase the processability, this polystyrene has been blended with polyphenylene oxide with a compromise of thermal stability of polyphenylene oxide, but processability was improved. So, not only the uh, final performance property, but the processing property is also important if a polymer although it is having very high uh, performance properties like make high mechanical strength, high thermal stability etcetera etcetera, but if that polymer could not be processed that is of no use. So, in order to make it processable or in order to reduce its uh, viscosity during processing at lower temperature. So, such type of uh, components like polystyrene can be blended to have a uh, blend so with, a, with uh, more or less improved properties with as due to some additive effect. So, here thermal property is reduced, but the processability is improved. Now, the it has been found that on blending of these two components the glass transition temperature T g of the blend is only 1, although there are two components 
it is sub, it is uh, can be it can be expected that if we take two component polymers say polymer uh, 1 and polymer 2 they are, they can have different tgs tg1 and tg2 but if these two polymers are compatible on blending they will form a polymer product polymer blend pb which will have only a single tg that can lie in between this tg1 and tg2 this uh, only having only one tg of the polymer blend although polymers of two different tgs are were used this gives a good indication of miscibility of the components in the blend that happens due to the additive effect. So, here the single TG increases with increasing polyether content. Since the TG 2 of the polyether is polyphenyl oxide is higher than the TG 1 of polystyrene. So, on increasing the polyether in the component uh, in the in the blend though the final TG, TG of the resultant polymer blend increases with the increase of polyether content. Now, in terms of tensile strength, however, the polyblend is synergistic. Now, in this case, tens although this Tg increases this way, the tensile strength uh, gives quite improved property at some particular composition as I have explained earlier what is what, what do we mean by synergistic effect. Now, let us look into what is optimum requirements of complete miscibility. Since this miscibility is an important criteria to be developed in case of a polymer blend. So, we must also examine what are the optimum requirements. Now, a component polymers must have similar polarity, identical polarity means they must have identical uh, solubility parameter or very close solubility parameter of the component polymers then the component polymers should be of low molecular weight, they should not be very high molecular weight. If the molecular weight is high, then the solubility and miscibility of the component polymers in the blend uh, will be reduced. Then there might be, there could be hydrogen bonding, which is, uh, which is uh, one of the requirements. If there is hydrogen bonding, uh, the secondary interaction uh, between the component polymers, again that is very good for obtaining uh, miscibility. Other than hydrogen bonding, other strong interactions may be uh, like say inter other intermolecular interactions uh, say polar polar interaction or uh, dipolar interaction or van der Waal interaction that is also a, another requirement. So, most polymer pairs do not meet, may not meet these requirements for complete theoretical miscibility. Having positive free energy of mixing they tend to separate into two phases. So, this is this aspect should be kept in mind. Since two component polymers cannot meet the complete theoretical requirement of miscibility, so we have to look into their free energy mix, mixing. If the free energy mixing is, mixing is positive, the component polymers will tend to separate into two different phases. Let us proceed towards this other aspect, the semi-compatible uh, part of the uh, miscibility uh, part of the curve uh, in order to explain the miscibility, immiscibility. Now, effects of slight immiscibility or semi-compatibility, uh, in this case each phase will be a solid solution of minor polymer in major polymer, slight miscibility. The slight miscibility or semi compatibility can be explained if there is uh, it is seen that uh, each uh, phase it becomes a solid solution of mi minor polymer in the major polymer. Now, the phases separate into sub microscopic domains with the major polymer as continuous phase with major contribution to properties it may resemble that kind of uh, resemble a field uh, polymer system where the filler particles 
may remain dispersed in a continuous matrix here the major uh, continuous phase of the major polymer there can uh, the, there may be sub microscopic domains of the uh, smaller component and in this case uh, this continuous phase uh, provides major contribution to the properties the plot of properties versus composition in this case is a s shaped curve as you see from the curve is a s shaped curve showing an intermediate transition region uh, this transition region with a phase reversion inver phase inversion from one continuous phase to the other phase that means the um, uh, dispersed phase would become the continuous phase and the continuous phase would become the dispersed phase. So, this kind of phase inversion is, uh, uh, is found to occur in case of the semi compatible blend. Now, most commercial poly blends are of this type with the major polymer as continuous phase retaining most of its properties and minor polymers forms the small discrete domains contributing synergistically to certain specific properties. So, the major polymer uh, contribute the major properties and the dispersed phase polymer dispersed, dispersed domains of the discrete polymer um, uh, uh, that contributes to the synergistic aspect of the uh, of, uh, synergistic effect on some specific properties special properties. Now, in case of incompatibility the third component of the curve incompatibility here uh, the less miscibility in case of less miscible phase separation from larger domains with weaker interfacial bonding between them. So, here the uh, domains um, larger domains now there can be domains dispersed domains in a continuous matrix now if there is some lack of interface bonding interface interaction between the domains and the uh, matrix phase then we talk we regard this as less uh, the um, uh, blend having less miscibility. Now, this happens due to the weak interaction at the interface and if there is weak interaction at the interface or the interface is weak then under st stress the poly blend uh, this, this stress will be concentrated at those interfaces and the poly blend will show poorer properties that means the mechanical properties. Uh, will be inferior and uh, the product will fail at the interface at the weak interface site um, and so poorer properties for either of the polymers in the blend. Next this u shaped curve property uh, curves thus provide a strong indication of immiscibility. This U shape curve gives a strong indication of immiscibility or incompatibility between the component polymers. They show practical incompatibility and lack of practical utility. Now, in case of synergistic behavior, here you see the synergistic behavior, this shows improvement of properties beyond that expected from simple additive effect. So, if you draw if you combine these two uh, properties of individual polymers. So, that's the, that is the additive effect. So, this uh, due to the their good visibility and due to the effect of the dispersed phase uh, good uh, interfacial interaction between the dispersed phase and the matrix phase there can be some synergistic effect or improvement in or um, increase in properties at some intermediate composition. <coughs> the synergism may result from dipole dipole attraction between the polymer components. Now, examples of synergistic behavior typical examples of the polymer blends we can think of we can discuss with the blend of uh,
LDP low density polyethylene with EPDM. Now, this can be a good pair of component polymers for making a successful blend. Now, LDP contains ethylene unit and EPDM contains ethylene unit and propylene unit. So, it is supposed to form good interaction between this polyethylene will, uh, will provide good interaction between uh, this ethylene unit of uh, the copolymer ethylene propylene and since poly propylene uh, propylene unit is also one hydrocarbon. So, ethylene uh, segments or ethylene units of the poly uh, LDP will also have good interaction with, with this polypropylene. So, this kind of blend E and ethylene propylene copolymer blend gives a good synergistic effect and in this case the synergism will be further increased if this uh, EPDM part EPDM part is partially crystalline. Now, ethyl polyethylene is crystalline. Now, ethylene propylene is amorphous that is why it is rubber. Now, if some crystallinity could be developed in, in this ethylene propylene domain. So, it will provide further synergistic effect. Now, if that crystallinity could not be developed, if it remains as amorphous in this case amorphous. So, thus amorphous epidium will show a non synergistic effect. So, in order to get in order to obtain synergistic effect of uh, this uh, polyethylene LDP and EPDM blends one of the requirement is that the EPDM component should must be uh, partially crystalline. This so this partial crystallinity in EPDM shows a dramatic effect of morphology on properties of polymer blends. So, the synergism arises from a tendency of LDP to crystallize and to nucleate crystallization of ethylene segments in EPDM. There is a very good interesting observation that since LDP is crystalline that LDP crystallite will induce or nucleate some crystallization in the ethylene segments of the EPDM polymer that is why the synergistic effect is available. Now, the properties of miscible poly blends can also be explained in other way. Now, these physical properties of poly blends can be semi empirically uh, governed by this equation P is equal to P is the overall property of the blend that, that is equal to P 1 phi 1 that means, P 1 is the property of this uh, component 1 polymer. P2 is the property of component 2 polymer, phi 1 and phi 2 are the volume fraction of the 2 polymers and uh, this is uh, phi 1 by phi 2, okay. i phi 1 by phi 2. Now, plus i into phi 1 into phi 2, phi 1 into phi 2, where P is polyvalent property, phi is concentration and i is interaction term. Okay. So, this uh, interaction term can be positive or negative or 0. Now, if this i is 0, this term becomes 0 and in that case rule of mixture that means additive rule additive effect applies. In case of the value of i as positive in that case p would be greater than the weighted average of the constituent polymers and that shows a synergistic effect. So, in case of positive value of i one can get the synergistic effect on the properties of the polyblend. If the value of i is negative that is less than the simple average value of the properties of the two components it shows anti synergistic behavior. In case of immiscible polyblend 
if there are two phases this phase 1 which is continuous phase, phase 2 dispersed phase, but these two phases are immiscible there a semi empirical relationship uh, can be used for explaining the properties of immiscible polyblend that is p by p 1 is equal to 1 plus a b phi 2 divided by 1 minus b psi phi 2 where phi 2 is the concentration of dispersed phase component and a varies between 0 and infinity depending on the shape and orientation of the dispersed phase and nature of interface and b depends on the relative values of properties say p 1 and p 2 of the component polymers and a uh, of and uh, on a p 1 p 2 on a and psi is a reduced concentration that is a function of the maximum packing fraction for a uh, tending towards value of a tending towards 0 the dispersed phase is soft for a tending uh, towards infinity the dispersed phase is hard. So, the value of a and the value of b and the concentration of the component polymers that judge or that determine the overall property of p of the polymer blend. Now, let us look into the compatibilization of polymers, component polymers to make a polymer blend. Now, incompatible polymer blends are weak, we know. The reason behind this is that there is there can be high interfacial tension between the component polymers and at the interface poor addition uh, is found between the two phases. Now, blending of polymers that become unsuccessful due to the incompatibility of component polymers new successful polymer blend preparation became possible by the use of compatibilizing agents. This approach yielded unique properties in polymer blends not attainable from either of the component polymers of the blend. Their performance depends on the size and morphology of the dispersed phase. Now, there are various ways of compatibilization. Let us discuss on such compatibilization. Say in case of biodegradable polymer, people tried to develop biodegradable polymer from polyethylene as such polyethylene is a non biodegradable polymer. In order to make this polyethylene biodegradable people blended starch with this polyethylene, but starch is a naturally occurring polysaccharide which was blended with polyethylene, but the starch is a polar polymer and polyethylene is a non polar polymer the compatibility of these two polymers are almost negligible. These two components are immiscible incompatible uh, in the blend. In order to improve their compatibility people used uh, malic anhydride grafted polyethylene as the malic anhydride grafted polyethylene as the compatibilizer for polyethylene and starch. Say 5 to 10 parts or 12 parts of this malic anhydride grafted P with certain proportion of polyethylene and starch could lead to a uh, 
semi compatible polyblend of starch and polyethylene. While polyethylene and starch as such are immiscible, but use of 5 to 10 parts by weight of this malignant hydride grafted P improved their miscibility because this malignant hydride part this is a polar part that helps in interface addition between the polyethylene and starch and leads to forming semi compatible polyblend. Now, in case of this polymers as mutual solvent, the other ways of this compatibilization is some polymers can be used as a mutual solvent between the component polymers. And in this case, this polymers as mutual solvents are used as compatibilizing agent. For example, this polycaprolactone, this is a polyester biodegradable polyester. This polycaprolactone, when it is blended with polycarbonate and polystyrene coacrylonitrile, such type of compatibilization can be available. Polycarbonate and polystyrene coacrylonitrile, uh, the, their compatibility can be improved by the use of polycaprolactone. Now, here this polycaprolactone acts as solvent in this in the miscibility of these components polycarbonate and polystyrene coacrylonitrile. Other example of such polymers acting as compatibilizer uh, are see EPDM ethylene propylene diene polymer which is a rubber when malic anhydride is grafted on EPDM that can be easily blended with nylon 66 polymer and this happens due to the grafting of malic anhydride on EPDM. Otherwise, EPDM is a hydrocarbon polymer, nylon 6 is a polar polymer, they are not supposed to be miscible with each other, but when this malic anhydride is grafted on EPDM, this malic anhydride part in this EPDM graft, uh, grafted chain in the EPDM acts as the compatibilizer. So, here we can say this EPDM has been functionalized in such a way by grafting malanganhydride so that it becomes miscible with nylon 66. Before such functionalization, EPDM was not miscible with nylon 66. So, the interface addition interface bonding of these two component polymers EPDM and nylon 66 could be improved by grafting malanganhydride on EPDM. Now, if we look into this, the scheme of such grafting reaction between EPDM and malignanhydride, that is with the grafted malignanhydride, this is grafted malignanhydride part grafted on EPDM that reacts with the terminal NH2 group of, group of the nylon. Now, nylon contains this terminal NH2 group. So, this anhydride group anhydride group, this acts like acid, this acts like amine group acts like base. So, it is a kind of acid base reaction and some condensation occurs and forming this poly polyamide bond CONH amide bond with the end of this nylon chain and this is the uh, uh, this is the EPDM chain. And leaving behind one free carboxyl group. So, you can say this is a kind of 
reactive compatibilization and many people have tried with different systems and they have found that such reactive compatibilization or compatible, uh, uh, such kind of compatibilization through reactive blending uh, gives excellent results of compatibility and improvement in properties of the polyblend. So, this is the EPDM chain to which malignant hydride was grafted and this amine group of the nylon chain, the, this, this side contains the rest of the nylon molecule uh, part, residual part of the molecule, nylon molecule. So, here through such amide linkage, this is a permanent covalent linkage. So, this kind of system is compatibilized. So, nylon 66 becomes compatibilized with EPDM through such malignant hydride grafting. Now, if we take this block or graft copolymers, uh, this is another way of compatibilization. We can take copolymers. graft copolymer or block copolymer for compatibilization of two component polymers. Here the presence of either of this graft copolymer or block copolymer can reduce the interfacial tension between the component polymers and that prevents the gross segregation of the component polymers and promotes addition between them. The effective concentration of such block or graft copolymers may range from very low amounts say 0.1 percent to 5 percent. So, this the presence of this block or graft copolymer produces a miraculous effect in compatibilization of the component polymers in a blend. Let us look into some specific examples. Say for example, this component polymers to be blended may be designated as polymer A, poly A to be blended with poly B. For compatibilizing these two polymers, poly A with poly B, we have to choose a polymeric compatibilizer of this form poly A block B. Means you can have a polymer uh, having block of a monomer followed by block of B monomer. Like this A block B block and the base component polymer is made of A monomer and this other component polymer is polymer contains B monomer. So, the component polymers are made of A and B monomers and these two may not be compatible, but if the same monomers could be used to form a block copolymer, that block copolymer comes in between this A and B here in between this A and B. So, B part will uh, just B part of this block copolymer will orient towards the B component and A part will orient towards the A component and that leads to a miscibility between the polymer A with polymer B. Alternatively, one can use a poly C 
block D or poly C block uh, a grafted G, not block, grafted G. So, you can one can take uh, a block copolymer of C and D or one can take a block graft copolymer of C and D, where C and D are compatible with A and B. C and D are compatible with A and B respectively, but are not miscible with them. So, C and D are compatible with A and B respectively, where C and D adhere to A and B respectively, but are not miscible with them. So, that can remain adhered, but they are not miscible, but if this kind of technique can help compatibilization of uh, the polymer uh, A and B of polymers of A and B. Let us take the example of EPDM. PMM A blends. Now, this EPDM contents say these units like this ethylene unit propylene unit and some diene unit along with this. So, this is EPDM diene can be ethylidine norbordine 1 4 hexadiene so and so. So, this EPDM is a polar polymer and PMMA A non polar uh, this is a polar polymer and this is non polar polymer now this is epdm is not supposed to be compatible with epdm is not supposed to be compatible with this uh, pmma but that can be compatibilized if one takes EPDM such EPDM molecule to which suppose this is EPDM having this kind of chemical formula chemical structure onto which if this kind of polymer can be grown by grafting. So, this is PMMA chain this is possible grafting of PMMA chain on EPDM, while EPDM and PMMA are immiscible non compatible, but use of small proportion of small quantity of this PMMA grafted EPDM in between these two can produce a good compatible polymer. Uh, polymer blend. So, EPDM plus this PMMA grafted EPDM can mix with PMMA. Now, this PMMA grafted EPDM will orient itself in such a way that EPDM part 
will orient towards the epidium moiety and here this towards PMMA, PMMA part will orient towards if, uh, PMMA moiety and the system enter system will become compatible. There can be other example PP polypropylene polyethylene blend with EPM ethylene propylene rubber this is a purely saturated rubber purely saturated rubber without having any cross linking site to make it cross, cross linkable one should use some periodical cross linker to make uh, to uh, cross link it. This is also an elastomer ethylene propylene uh, copolymer or one can take EPDM. Now, in this polypropylene and polyethylene although uh, both are plastics, but these two polymers contain different chemical units. Now, polyethylene is structurally symmetrical in one way and polypropylene is also structurally symmetrical in other way, but if some polypropylene is some quantity of polypropylene is introduced in polyethylene matrix or the, or the vice versa, the crystalline property crystallinity of the either polymers will be affected. As we have found that if some prop propylene unit is copolymerized with ethylene to form it will form a copolymer of ethylene and propylene that is elastomeric whereas, polyethylene is plastic. The same effect can happen over here that means, they can lead to a an incompatible blend now, that can be made miscible provided some compatibilizer is used. In that case again this EPM or EPDM is a solution to develop compatibility. The reason is very similar either EPM or EPDM contains both ethylene and propylene units in their backbone chain. So, these polymer segments will orient in such a way so that ethylene will ethylene units will uh, come close to the ethylene units of polyethylene and propylene units of such ethylene propylene or EPDM will come closer to the propylene units of the polypropylene. So, this way they form a compatible system of polymer blend. Other example is polystyrene nylon 6 blend. Again these are of two extreme nature. Their compatibility can be improved by adding polystyrene and a block, copo, uh, block copolymer uh, of polystyrene and nylon 6. Other example, another example is polystyrene copolymer with acrylonitrile, styrene acrylonitrile copolymer. one component polymer, another component polymer is polystyrene copolymer with butadiene. So, these two polymers as component polymers P 1 and P 2 
that can form a very good blend if one takes uh, blends with butadiene rubber or butadiene rubber PMMA block of polymer, block of butadiene followed by block of MMA. So, this is a block copolymer. So, such block copolymer can act as a compatibilizer between these component polymers P1 and P2. Reason is styrene, polystyrene is rigid polymer, rigid plastic with less impact strength. Acclonitile leads to a very strong polymer, strong and tough polymer and their rigidity can be modified, their toughness can be modified by blending with styrene butadiene copolymer. This is an elastomer, but their miscibility is not available. In order to improve the miscibility between this styrene butadiene copolymer SBR with the styrene acclonitile copolymer, a block of butadiene and MMA copolymer or block copolymer of butadiene and PMMA acts as compatibilizer to increase the properties. <coughs> now, there could be some modifiers which act as compatibilizing agent. That modifier can be an interactive copolymer containing a rubbery component. Say, example is acrylic based copolymers, chlorinated polyolefins, ethylene propylene diene rubber, polyethylene covinyl acetate, etcetera. Now, these polymers play a dual role compatibilizing and toughening. So, since they increase their compatibility and along with increasing the compatibility they increase the toughness of the polymer, these polymers are used at much higher loading than pure compatibilizers. That is why 0.1 to 5 weight percent of the uh, compatibilizers may be sufficient. In this case, 10 to 40 weight percent of a modifier may be needed to uh, modify the properties of such polymer blends. This shows a scheme of the preparation of a polymer blend between polycarbonate PC with polybutylene terephthalate. Polybutylene terephthalate is little flexible, whereas polycarbonate is rigid. Now, here one can use 30 to 70 percent of polycarbonate and PBT can be used from 20 to 60 percent by weight. In order to get high impact strength alloy out of polycarbonate and polybutylene terephthalate, the some core cell acrylic latex can be used to improve the impact strength of these two component polymers in the blend. You know, you know PET polyethylene terephthalate is a polyester, PBT polybutylene terephthalate is also another polyester and polycarbonate that contains this carbonate group in the polymer chain having 
some rigid phenyl rings this way. So, the presence of this unit, presence of this unit, it makes a very good high impact property uh, polymer and further its impact strength can be improved by blending with PVT. Now, there can be nano blends. Now, the dispersed this size of the dispersed phase particle in a blend is rarely below 0.1 millimeter. Or say 0.1 millimeter or 10 nanometer irrespective of the computation method. Now, during extrusion processing, uh, during extrusion in situ polymerization of monomer A in the presence of polymer B can compatibilize to form nanostructured blend. That means, such nanostructured blend can be prepared during extrusion polymerization means when the two component polymers are extruded by mixing in an extruder screw. So, these two monomers can polymer polymerize during such extrusion and a fraction of polymer B chains bears initiating sites at the chain ends or long along the chain backbones from which polymer A chains can grow. Basically, it is a kind of grafting reaction of one monomer onto the backbone of the main polymer during extrusion process, because that free radical which is required to create a uh, grafting site that free radical is created by high shear mixing during extrusion and this grafting reaction occurs. In the process polymer A and a graft or block of polymer of A and B are formed simultaneously leading to in situ polymerized and in situ compatibilized A B polymer blends. The feasibility of such a process was studied for nano blends of polypropylene with nylon 6. So, this reaction came, scheme shows that graft copolymer of polypropylene and polyamide nylon 6 P A 6 means nylon 6 using an isocyanate bearing polypropylene. Here you see this is a polymer bearing an isocyanate group NCO group and this is the caprolactone. This caprolactone can form nylon 6 by opening up this ring at this bond. That means, this uh, bond breaks and by breaking this bond it polymerizes and you see this unit is linked to uh, this polymer chain through nitrogen leaving uh, forming this amide link. So, uh, we find that we find that some acid acceptor can be used over there and that continues to grow such nylon chain on the polypropylene backbone. So, if these steps 1 and 2, 1, 2 and 3, if this is initiated, uh, in, uh, these are the various initiation stages, initiation steps that can continue to propagate in the propagation step to form a polymer chain on polypropylene. That means, polypropylene chain over which this nylon 6 is grafted on this polypropylene chain and ultimately a blend of polypropylene with nylon 6 is available. This is a kind of thing this is uh, some uh, uh, which is uh, which is totally uh, impossible situation. One by graft copolymerization, one can make impossible situation to a possible situation. That means, polypropylene and nylon 6 are basically highly immiscible polymers, but 
through grafting reaction during extrusion process such uh, good compatible blend of polypropylene and nylon 6 were developed by this process and here shows the detailed reaction scheme how this uh, nylon 6 is uh, reacted onto this polypropylene. This is a kind of reactive blending in other way we can say this is a kind of reactive blending. So, in the long run if somebody wants to develop a property of polar polymer on the property of a non-polar polymer, this is the way how one can proceed. Again, if I take the example of this polyethylene which is non-biodegradable, but this polyethylene can be made biodegradable provided some oxygenated or polar atoms or groups can be generated over polyethylene and that polymer can um, that polymer can be biodegradable. So, this gives an indication that the waste polyethylene uh, films that can be collected from the garbage cleaned and such type of reaction uh, of sub say caprolactam, uh, caprolactam or other reactive monomer can be mixed in an extruder during mixing that polymer forms some grafted chain over polyethylene and that polymer can be used as a biodegradable polymer for biodegradable packaging film. So, one can take such a project of blending uh, packaging waste packaging film with say caprolactam or other reactive monomer to form such biodegradable product. Thank you.